This is the day the Lord has made. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Charles Truax, filling in for Pastor Judd this morning. The vicar and I will be leading you in worship and sharing God's mighty word with you, and we are delighted to do so. And so I invite you now to stand, if you are able, as we hear the invocation and confess our sins and be absolved. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand and greet one another with a greeting of peace.
gracious God, our Heavenly Father. Your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world, and at la life's last end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice, O greatly, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a coal the foal of a do donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 7. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good, so now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have had these hidden, 
have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. The children are invited forward for a children's message. some help this morning, and Lord knows early service, I proved I need some help. But I got two jobs. I need two helpers. Now one's, one's just moving some water, and the other one is kind of electronics. You might have to troubleshoot. There shouldn't be any programming, but, but um, so Kylie, you want to help? You want, you want to move the water, or what about the programming and the troubleshooting? Oh, you're going to do the programming. Tro now, before we commission it to the owner, we might have to reprogram it. Are you all right with that? Okay. Okay. And then, Gabe, you help with the water? Okay. Which one do you think is easier? Oh, the programming, huh? The programming. Well, okay. I'll bring the programming out first. Let me grab this, too. Let's see. Which of these goes with the programming? This one's for the program. Gabe, hold on to that. All right. Oh, you're already groaning. What's the trouble? I only got, I've only got two buckets. All right. So. What is this? You know what this is? A saddle? Not quite. It goes... On the head, it goes around the neck of a horse. So it's kind of like a yoke. We heard Pastor read about a yoke this morning. And this is this is a horse collar. We use it for working. But you guys are ready to do work. Kylie's gonna do the programming, you're gonna move the water, right? Now it's not just these two buckets. What if we had to move like 50 buckets? Some help, but you got this. This is this is gonna help you. This yoke. You carry water, yeah. So Pastor Red, Jesus said, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But when we use a yoke or a collar like that, are we doing easy work? Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. What's your button say, Kylie? Easy. Easy. Maybe the programming is easy. What happens if you push it? That was easy. That's from an old commercial. That was easy. We have a yoke that seems like we have all the hard work, right? And we got the easy button. Jesus says, wear his yoke. His yoke is easy. This yoke is easy. Why? Because why is that? Why is it easy? Why is the yoke of Jesus easy? What do you think? Do we have to do work? What kind of work do we have to do for Jesus? Praying, being nice, sharing his love, being like Jesus. Colton's always like Jesus with his sister, right? Yep. 
Oh, vice versa? Yeah, Jesus did all the hard work. He did the work. What did he do? What did Jesus do? What did he do, Nate? He died for us. Was that easy or hard? That was hard. Jesus took the hard work. And then what did he do? He rose again. That's easy. It was easy for God, right? God can do anything. And God did that for us. Why would he do that for us? Why would Jesus do that for us? Why would he do all the hard work? He can help us. He wanted to help us. Do you like to help people? Yeah. We help people because we love them. Do you like cleaning up other people? Do you like doing things when your parents ask you? Jesus was, Jesus was asked to die for us. And he did. He was God. And he died for us. He rose for us. And he lives for us. He will come again for us. Right? Let's, let's say a prayer. Say that again, Tim. Right. He will come again. Right? Right. Dear Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for your grace and love for us to send your son, Jesus, do the hard work for us and rise for us. Keep us strong in faith until you come again to bring us together in your kingdom. Amen. All right. I've got careful of the buckets, so I've got some work belts. I've got sour belts and I've got peppermint, so take a couple of what you like and have a great week.
mercy and peace be to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The text for the message this morning comes from our gospel lesson. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My dear Christian friends, we have such an interesting God. He works in such incredible and strange ways at times that we don't obviously sometimes comprehend what he is up to. So, for example, the question I have for you this morning is what does a distraught groom, a handyman, a teacher, and a lawyer have in common? And the answer is the song that we just sang, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I wanted to share not only the song with you, but the incredible God who inspired the man who wrote the words for us and give you the background of why it is so meaningful and what it took to create. Because our God, our Heavenly Father, wants to make sure you fully appreciate in his strange and wonderful ways and working in our world and in our lives that he is committed to make good things come out of bad, to be our true friend, and to accomplish his purposes any way he chooses. God does work in interesting ways, doesn't he? Over 200 years ago, Joseph Scriven was born in England. His desire as a young man was to go into the military, but a series of illnesses ruled that out. So he went to school instead to become a teacher. And along the way, he met a beautiful young woman asked her to marry him, and she agreed. And yet, tragically, on the very eve of their wedding, she was killed in an auto. She was killed in an accident. Distraught, obviously de devastated by what had happened, he faced that reality that many of us go through in times like these. Do I blame God? Do I then spend the rest of my life in anger and bitterness, or do I turn to God for help and comfort and solace? To his credit, he did the latter. And he realized that maybe God had something else in mind for him to do. And he looked for opportunities to do that, helped along the way by the fact, because of what was going on in England, he couldn't find a teaching job. He read an ad in a newspaper about a need for teachers in Canada and decided that maybe that's what God wanted him to do. So he immigrated to Canada, found a job in a small village in a very poor rural community, but felt that God had led him there to do just that. And so he began what he considered to be his ministry there, teaching every day. And on weekends, because of his background, did handyman jobs in the poorest of the families there, trying to help them live a better life in the hard frontier that they were established in. And in his spare time then, he took up writing poetry because he felt that that was his release and his way out. Got a letter from his mother back in England and she had said that um, she was very ill. He wrote a letter to encourage her, and he included one of his poems, and he wrote a note on it saying, this is what helped me through the darkest of my time. And it was entitled, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. She wrote back and thanked him profusely and said how much the poem had meant to her. Well, Joseph himself got sick, wasn't able to teach class for a while, and a lawyer friend of him visited him and discovered that he wrote poetry, read some of them, was impressed, but was terribly impressed when he got to this one and read it and said, we've got to do something here. Introduced him to a publisher who agreed to publish everything, and when reading What a Friend We Have in Jesus, introduced him to a composer named Converse, and the two of them joined together to produce our beloved hymn that touches so many lives in the last 150 years, all because a man went through a tragedy and worked in a community 
and suffered that his mother had gotten very ill and all moved by God to understand that God works in mysterious ways to make good come out of bad. Romans 8, 28 tells us, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. God works for the good of those who love him. No, God is not the source of evil. There's plenty of sin in our world to accomplish all of that. But what he does do is he takes all of that and turns it around and makes good things come out of it for us and for other people. And that's what we depend on, isn't it? To know that God's behind the scenes working, taking what is difficult for us to handle and finding ways to make things better. For Joseph Scriven, it was the production of this song and the accolades that he received in his own lifetime from the beloved hymn that we all sang a little bit ago and rejoiced in as well. For that song reveals to us that we truly do have the greatest friend of them all, Jesus, who is there behind the scenes working for our benefit. A sailor by the name of Abner Turner in the 19th century found out as well. He was on a sailing ship in the Pacific when a great storm came up. The ship floundered and sank. And of the 200 crew, he was the only one to survive, washed up on a desert island. He spent his time going around the island, picking up refuse from the wreck and what he could make for himself, built himself a crude hut. But every single day he would stand on the shore and look out at the sea, waiting for that ship to arrive to rescue him. And every day it was the same, nothing. But he didn't despair because he knew that his heavenly father would take care of him. One day he was walking around his island seeing what was new and gathering up what he could to survive. When he came around the corner, he saw smoke he rushed back and discovered that his hut was on fire and everything in it was burning up and there was absolutely nothing he could do. He fell on his knees in utter despair, wondering if it was worth it anymore. That maybe he should just throw himself into the sea and end it because he was going to have to start all over again. And a troubled night passed and he was fearful of what life was going to be like for him. But early the next morning, when the sun came up, he looked up and unbelievably there offshore was a beautiful sailing ship and a small rowboat was being rowed directly at him. And when they rescued him and took him back to the ship and introduced him to the captain, he asked, how in the world did you know that I was here? And the captain looked perplexed and said, well, we saw your smoke signal and came to your rescue. How incredible is our God who does things his own way when we think that it can't take place. He's there the same way for each of us. And whether it's broken hearts or addictions or diseases or illness or family issues or financial struggles or job problems or even facing death, God is there saying to us, I'll take care of you and that you are mine. What an incredible God we have who does that just for us. Our gospel lesson and the text for our message reminds us that Jesus says to the people of his day, come to me. And surprisingly, and what makes the pages of scripture so meaningful is how the people respond to that. Look at John the Baptist's disciples when John is put into prison. Who else should we re turn to? Who else has the good news? And they turn to Jesus. Even the disciples, when they face the reality of what they are doing and should they follow this one or should they look for another, remember what Peter says in John 6. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Lord, who else should we go for? 
Who else knows the truth but you? And the people of the New Testament respond as well. Nicodemus comes at night because he can't get his questions answered, and he's heard that this one can. The centurion Roman soldier whose servant is near death knows that he can't turn to all of those gods the Romans believe in because they haven't helped. But maybe this one he's heard of, this Jesus can, and he does so. And Jairus, with his dead daughter, and my favorite, the friends who gather up their infirmed friend and haul him up to the top of the roof of the building in which Jesus is teaching, and they cut a hole in the roof and lower the man down so that Jesus can heal him, understand who their truest friend is. And we understand through it as well who our true friend is. For Jesus has come to help, to make a difference, to meet our needs, because he knows our needs. Inside of us, he knows deeply dwells a desire to be loved, a, a desire to be accepted no matter where we've been or what we've done, a need to be forgiven because of all that sin that weighs us down and leads us away from God, and a hope to be saved that when it's all said and done, somehow we can find our way back to God. And incredibly, this one, our truest friend, does it all for us, and we don't need to find our own way, because Jesus provides the way. I am the way and the truth and the life, he says. No one comes to the Father except through me. What an incredible God and what an incredible Savior we have been given. You might ask why God has done all of this, loved you and forgiven you and accepted you and prepared heaven for you and acted in his incredible, redeeming, special ways. And the answer is simply this, that he finds us useful. All the things we go through, all the people we meet, all the encounters that take place, all of the opportunities that we've been involved in, are all useful to God, not only to keep us close to him, but to touch the lives of other people for him. Now, Pastor Ian Thomas found out. He went on an evangelism experience in Phoenix, Arizona, and there they spent an intensive week being taught how to confront people with the gospel of Jesus Christ how to get the conversation steered back to Jesus and how to convince people to believe. But when they went out in the community, Pastor Thomas was an utter failure. He just couldn't do it tongue-tied and confused and talked about the weather, but he never could figure out quite how to get the conversation over to Jesus. And so he left the conference frustrated and mad at himself that he had spent all this time and accomplished nothing, and he still wasn't any closer to knowing how to help Jesus in his ministry. He got on the airplane and he decided he'd had it with humanity. He was going to ignore every single person on that plane, going to lock himself with his seatbelt in his seat and fall asleep. And he did so. And just as he closed his eyes, he heard... And he opened his eyes and realized it was the guy sitting across the aisle from him who said, hey, I've been reading this story about a guy named Nicodemus from the Bible in John chapter 3, and I'm confused. Do you happen to know anything about the Bible? God works in such incredible and interesting ways, doesn't he? For he is our dearest friend. And we can lean on him no matter what we go through, knowing that he's going to be there and he's going to help because he has promised to do so and that we now have this wonderful gift to share with other people. And so, my friends, as you go through your daily life, don't ever neglect what might happen to you because you never know what God might be up to through you. In his name, then, Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
I invite you now to stand if you are able and proudly profess your Christian faith. This day we use the words of the Apostles' Creed and we say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today in our prayers, we pray for Daniel Collins, former student of Pam Stump, who endures with daily neurological pain. George Snyder, father of Cece Snyder, who is undergoing radiation treatments. Kelly Franks, friend of Alice and Bill Francis, who is continuing treatment for stage 4 cancer. Kenneth Kahn, father of John Kahn, who is undergoing radiation and chemo for brain cancer. June Taylor, neighbor of Ruth Selmeyer, who is struggling with a series of medical problems. Caroline, friend of Rick and Cheryl Baker, who is recovering from open heart surgery. Paul Jansen, friend of Vicki Schwab, who is fighting stage 4 colon cancer. Tim Hill, brother-in-law of Sally Martin, who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Bill Westfall, Chrissy Snyder's father, who has been diagnosed with cancer. Michelle and her husband Rob, friends of Carolyn Ott, who are both suffering with cancer. Becky McIntyre, Vicki Schwab's sister, who prays that her surgery went well and for answered prayers. Bruce Brinker, who is recovering from surgery for prostate cancer. Dave Schul, who is undergoing treatments for esophageal cancer. Uh, David Keller, Matt Keller's father, who has an upcoming knee replacement surgery. Jenny Wentz, lead cook at Emanuel Lutheran School, who has been diagnosed with cancer. And we also celebrate with Gary and Kippy Gilly, who celebrate the birth of their grandson, Emilio, born on July 1st from Nella and Clint Gilly. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from anxiety and worry, that we would hold fast to the conviction that, for Jesus' sake, we are more value than birds and lilies of our, to our Creator, who knows what we need. Let us pray to the Lord. For this congregation, that the Lord would enkindle the gifts of the, His Holy Spirit and give us a mutual encouragement, by each other's faith, let us pray to the Lord. For our homes, that our Heavenly Father would be the companion of those who are alone, the strength of husbands and wives, and the blessing of parents as they catechize their children, and that he would preserve our families from every plague and evil, let us pray to the Lord. For peace and protection, that God would bless our nation, leaders, and integrity, and wisdom to defend against evil, until at last he cuts off the war horse and the chariot forever. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are incarcerated, that God would foster in them repentance and trust in his grace, preserve them from greater evil, and enable them by such forgiveness to bear their sentence as a joy custody of uh, joyful custody of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For comfort to those weary and heavy laden with tribulations or illnesses or celebrations, especially those uh, we name Daniel Collins, George Schneider, Kelly Franks, Kenneth Kahn, June Taylor, Caroline, Paul Jansen, Tim Hill, Phil Westfall, Michelle and her husband Rob, Becky McIntyre, Bruce Brinker, Dave Shul, David Keller, Jenny Wentz, and Gary and Kippy Gilly, that they would be in blessed and be blessed with the knowledge of his easy yoke and light burden and find rest from their Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for those who receive Christ's sacrament, that with penitent hearts and a common confession of faith, they may be freed by the blood of his eternal covenant. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the saints who have gone before us, seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness above all else, let us give thanks to the Lord and that God would preserve us in repentance and faith until we stand before him in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. All these things and whatever you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. to receive his supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you st so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying... on us and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. At the end of the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, drink, this is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table.
strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life eternal. Amen.
just pastor is out on a retreat in North Carolina today and for the next two weeks, so keep him in your prayers. And uh, pastor in the back and I will be with you these next two weeks. A couple announcements from pastor. Uh, the next community night is this Wednesday at Millican Woods. There is a splash pad there, so bring your swimsuit. Please mark your calendar and bring dessert if you can. A couple of youth events to note. July 17th is Bonfire for 6th through 9th graders at, here at Emanuel. We'll be having hot dogs, s'mores, and devotions. And then July 19th is a Bible study and board games for 3rd through 5th graders. Please check the news and notes for times and details. A father-son camping trip is set for July 21st and 22nd. We'll be camping on the property of the church of a church member. Grandfathers and uncles are welcome to check the notes for the news for more notes. And then also, if you weren't able to come to Bible study this morning, Bible study during the summer has changed a new time to 9:30 instead of 9:45, and it will meet in the media room instead of the 1986-1896 room. Um, so if you come next week to Bible study, it'll start at 9:30 a.m. And lastly, just on a personal note, my wife and children just stepped out. Uh, it's my son's nap time right now. So, <laughs> just so that you're aware. He's usually not this fussy. In fact, if you were at Bible study today, you would have noticed how quiet he usually is. But he's really tired, and that's just part of moving, right? You get used to it. So, he, um, but we just wanted to thank you very much. We have given, been given so much support this past week from y'all. And uh, not only warm welcomes and being greeted, but also we received a box full of quarters for laundry, which we really needed. Thank you. And then also uh, gift cards. We were given a lot of gift cards for the area. So thank you so much from the uh, graciousness of you guys to us. We're very thankful. And we'll also put a thank you in the, this week's newsletter as well, just for those that didn't hear, weren't here this morning to hear it. So thank you, and go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you.